Good evening and welcome to the Speak Easy podcast. Good evening to all of you. And I am your host, Constance Willard. And I am here today. I am very excited because we have here joining us this evening for the Sunday evening wind down and Sunday evening wind down. We have in the studio today, tonight, an amazing guest, Dr. Teresa Mosley, Ambassador of Peace. I tell you all to get your tissues ready, to get your notepads ready, because she has a wealth of information to share and to teach us. And it's something that you can gain and that will benefit you, your families, your communities, everyone. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about Dr. Teresa. She's such an exciting person. Dr. Teresa Mosley is originally from Fayetteville, North Carolina. She's a United States Army veteran, eight-time best-selling author, and three-time international best-selling best -selling author, and three-times award-winning educator. And during the last 10 years, she has received 10 awards and recognition. Now, Dr. Teresa just retired from the Prince George's Maryland school system in June of this year. And let me tell you, her retirement is like, it's unlike any retirement that I know of. It's taken off and she's just doing all type of amazing things. Wonderful things are happening for her. Wonderful opportunities are coming to her. Why? Well, I'm going to tell you why. She has one book that she wrote that she will talk to you about. What's God got to do with it? What God's got to do with it? And when she tells you about that, you're going to find out he has everything to do with it. And from the day that she retired, she's just excelled and is steady moving on into greatness. And so I am going to play her theme song as I bring her up on stage. Dr. Teresa Mosley, an incredible woman of God, a visionary, a true leader, just a true mentor for all women. So without further ado, Dr. Teresa, how are you? I am blessed. Thank you. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. I'm doing Thank quite you. well this evening. Thank you for being here with us. And I'm just excited. I feel like I'm one of the listening audience because I just can't wait to hear what you have to say because you have accomplished and achieved so much. But the main thing that I want the listening audience to get from you today is age has nothing to do with it. I mean, later in life, you just start taking off like a rocket and you steady moving and you steady soaring. So Dr. Teresa, I just welcome you. I'm honored to have you here as a guest. I'm honored to know you. I'm honored to be considered a friend, travel companion. Yes. Let alumni with you. Oh my gosh, the list goes on, but it's all been good. It has all been good, all of it. So Dr. Teresa, what I want you to do is, I want you to tell the listening audience who Dr. Teresa Mosley is, what does she stand for, and what does she promote, and what is important to her? Thank you, Constance, for that introduction. Well, I'm just a little country girl from Fayetteville, North Carolina, U.S. Army veteran and former U.S. Army brat, spent 28 years in education. I'm an international motivational speaker. I'm an eight-time best-selling author. I'm a writer and speaker, and my main theme is transformational leadership and world peace. That's what I talk about. That's what I speak about. You see, I found the formula. In order to make this world a more peaceful place, everybody needs to live in their purpose. Everybody needs to know what their divine assignment is, because if they do, they will be successful, they will be fulfilled, and then they will have inner peace. That's what I speak about. That's what I write about. That's what I talk about. And I think that's what the world needs. Wonderful. Wonderful. I'm just excited. I am so excited. Now, just kind of talk us through 
How did you get to this point of writing about peace? Well, um, I let's talk about writing in general. When I was 14 years old, um, my brother died in a car accident. And I really, really struggled with his death because I actually had a premonition that it was going to happen and didn't tell him. And so I really thought it was my fault, you know, that my brother died in this car accident. And when I prayed to God to help me get through this, I was born and raised in First Baptist Church. Basically, God just told me to write. So the next day I got up and I wrote a six page letter to my teacher. And what I discovered after I wrote, I felt better. So I never even gave the, the, the letter to my teacher. His name is Cal Coons, by the way. He pitched for the New York Nets. Thank God he retired early. They didn't have Tommy John surgery back then because he was my science teacher and my, one of my very best friends. But that's when I started writing. I started writing about peace when I lost two students. I had one student who was shot to death and another student who was beat to death in a park. I had a campaign for no more violence in my school, one school, one community, one county at a time. And then two years later, this is like 2016, I'm watching the news and I see a familiar street. And I said, my God, I have cousins that live on that street. And the next picture was the pictures of my cousins. They were murdered in their house, 12 o'clock noon, broad daylight. My cousin who had prayer Bible study in her house on Wednesday night, really nice person. So that's when I decided I need to do more than just write about it. I need to speak about it too. So that's when I started speaking and writing about peace, inner peace, world peace, peace, peace in the community, peace in the neighborhoods. Yeah, that started. And so with our school districts, some of them being as troublesome as they are now. Mm -hmm. I know a few years back, I went to my son's high school. You know, it had been a while since I had been inside of a school and I had to walk through a metal detector. Yes. That made me feel some kind of way. First of all, knowing that my child was subjected to that every day, how can they learn in those type of environments when they are in fear of what may happen or who may have a gun that made it through the detector that was not picked up that can do harm and cause disarray in the classroom? So just kind of walk us through, you know, how do we start this journey of peace? It starts with the family. And, and people are not, I'm so glad you asked that question because it starts when the baby is born. We have to start raising children to be peaceful. We need to start raising children, letting them know, regardless of the color of your skin, that we all have the same blood. You know, children need to learn love, hope, peace, will, and purpose Early on, by the age of five, they need to know that if somebody falls down and, get, and gets hurt, you need to help them get up. They need to know that if somebody sits next to me and they're not the same color, they're still just as good as me. It starts yes. with the family. It starts when they're young. Here's the thing. When a baby is born, there's two things they're going to do. They're going to eat and they're going to sleep. Three things. And they're going to cry. But they're only going to cry if they're hungry or wet or cold. If we, if, if the caretaker does not meet the needs of that child, in other words, they're hungry and not fed, they're wet and not changed, they're cold and not comforted, they're never going to learn the virtue of hope. And when you don't learn hope, you don't trust. And when you don't trust, you don't love. And when you don't love, there's violence. Yes. Most of the serial killers are unattached children. That's research-based. I'm not making that up. So it starts with the family. Now, here's the thing. You know, one thing that's a constant is everybody has to go to school. Schooling is compulsory. It has been since 1865. You have to go to school, right? So when kids go to school, if a teacher, this is me as an educator talking now, if you see somebody struggling with getting along with their peers, if you see somebody doing violent acts in your classroom, you just can't ignore it. You have to do something. You have to help them. So educators have a really big, not just to educate teaching and writing, but let them know their character is just as important as their grade point average. And when you see kids acting out, there's a reason behind that. And it's our job and our duty to help those kids. I agree. And, you know, I think a lot of times educators, they overlook things. Because yes. they're so focused on those test scores at the end of the year and getting yes. that child through and mm -hmm. making sure they learn these things. And they overlook the main thing yes. that is so important for all of us, our social interaction skills. 
Yep. How well do we interact with others? Yes. And I think so many times that has been ignored. You know, because I look at some of the events that have happened in the news recently with some of the mass shooters and they have teachers say, oh my gosh, I, re- I had this child and I remember he did this and I remember that about him. Okay, well, you knew that. What did you do at that time? Or did you do anything at that time? And yeah. so I am glad that you're on this mission. You're only one person, but how do we recruit others to this army for peace? Well, the first thing in terms of educators, you have to train them, especially administrators. See, when I was administrator, I didn't have repeat offenders. If there was a fight, you're not fighting the second time because number A, I would find out A, what happened? B, how did that make you feel? C, what did you do? And D, what could you have done differently? So if they get the suspension or the in school or whatever the consequence is, maybe it's kind of just a mediation, I'm going to come back to them in a week or two. Hey, how's it going? Are you still having a problem with Teresa? What have you changed to make a difference in da-da-da-da-da? So we have to train educators to use that theory and technique that we learned in college to resolve conflict with students in the school building. And once wow. again, a lot of stuff starts at home as well. Exactly. And so again, so PTA, you know, I yes. think PTA is a good starting ground yes. mm-hmm. for educators in the school systems mm-hmm. and counselors to begin to work with parents because a lot of parents don't know how to parent. Yes. And so I think that would be a great starting place. Now, you know, I haven't been to a PTA meeting and I don't know when, but you know, I, I used to go faithfully with my mom with PTA and they always talked about bake sales and yes. fun stuff. Okay. But I wonder now what themes or what are the common themes of P- or do we even still have PTA meetings? They do have PTA, okay. PTA essays as well. But what happens is it's normally the parents that, that are supportive that come, the people that need to come don't show up. And a lot of times it's not their fault. It's because they work at night or they have to watch five kids. And so there's lots of reasons why parents don't attend PTA, but PTA enrollment often is low. And then the people that show up are the officers and their friends, you know? So, yeah, I think that in, in PTA is a good source because you can have training for parents. Let's yes. say, for example, a, a parent is having trouble with their 16 year old who has some violent tendencies. You know, we can bring in social services and tell them what they can do at the PTA meeting to help that child. We can bring in resources to them. So, yeah, PTA is a good way to start. Yes, it is. I, I think just have so. a meeting with coffee, but just really having some training for parents mm-hmm. and teachers. You know, PTA is P- Parent Teacher Association. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, I think it's just it's calling us to all be a little bit more creative in our way of thinking mm-hmm. and planning. Mm-hmm. So, you know, maybe... Okay, maybe we can't have it at the school. Maybe they can take it to a McDonald's or they have a playground and they can bring their kids. Those who got the five kids and they can have one person out there watching on the playground. Or how about the community center at the apartment complex where most of the kids live? Yes, exactly. Yes. So we're going to have to be, I think our, our society now is forcing us or calling us to come out and to be more creative in our strategizing and in our planning and how we're going to attack this thing because it is so important. Yes. It is so important. So, Dr. Teresa, tell us about some things that you have on the horizon because I hear you have some exciting things going on that your retirement, you probably had one, two days off. (laughs) You relax and and then boom, here we go. I'm so excited. Um, so, so excited. You know, I have a bookstore on my website. My website is creatingambassadorpeace.com. There's a bookstore with 12 books. And, and a lot of those books, like this one is Creating Ambassadors of Peace and Step Into Leadership Greatness and What's God Got to Do With It. I have I Am She. But my baby, my jewel that I'm birthing really soon is called Passion, Purpose, Peace. The Pathway Through Trials and Tribulations. Mm -hmm. It's the first anthology that where I am the visionary author. The song that you played earlier is the theme song for the book. And I have 14 amazing authors. And my daughter, Melissa, is the uh, forward author. And I have Dr. Desiree Richardson from London, England, is my afterward author. And when both of them, the forward and afterward author, read the book, they said, oh, my gosh, these stories are amazing. And you pick the right 14 people to share their stories. I mean, they share their stories of 
of peace and hope and will and, and death and, and overcoming so many obstacles. And I really wanted to write this book so that people know no matter what's happening in your life, no matter how bad things are, you have the answer. You have the solution already inside of you. And there is a light at the end of the tunnel. I talk mm. about how I went from being homeless for three days to owning two homes with twin Mercedes Benz in my garage. But that was success, but it wasn't fulfillment. It wasn't, I wasn't fulfilled until I started speaking and writing and serving others. And so whatever it is that's going on in your life, these authors write about, when they start serving other people, they become successful, fulfilled, and have inner peace. So I'm so excited about that. I'm yes. also excited about, um, I'm going to be attending training at the UN to become an official UN Peace Ambassador, September 24th and 25th. And in November, I'm headed to London, England, where I am the recipient of a major award. Um, so I'll, I'll share more about that on my social media, but that's happening. That's happening. And I'm so excited about that. I just finished a speech yesterday on resilience and perseverance at the Thurgood Marshall Center. Um, I'll be speaking at a graduation on August the 6th. And uh, yes, things are happening. <laughs> yes. And so let's talk about your book, What's God Got to Do With It? Yes. Let's talk about that one. You so know, this because is the one thing I have learned from you, and it's something I've been saying all the time. Some people say, well, you know, at this age, you know, I, I, sh I can't do this. And well, you know, I shouldn't listen. And I tell people all the time, as long as the blood is running warm, you that's, that's the only requirement and that's the one thing i've learned about you it's like the older you get the better you get yes you look amazing thank you and 64. you're just doing all kind of things yes. and so let's talk about that book because god has everything to do with it this is an anthology the visionary is was kimberly lebeau and i've done a couple of books with her and this is a book of miracles so when miracles happen What's God got to do with God had everything to do with the miracles. In my chapter, I talk about three miracles. And the first one was in 1981. Um, I got really sick at work. I just got out of the military and I was really, really sick. Went to the VA hospital and um, they said, well, have you been out of the country lately? I said, well, yeah, I was in Sinop, Turkey last year. I was, you know, in the military. And they said, well, we think you picked up a virus over there and we don't know what it is, but your temperature is like 103, but we're going to have to admit you. I didn't have an appetite. I was losing weight. I was a delirious at times and they didn't know what to treat me. They didn't know what the virus was. So they just kind of mm -hmm. like just monitored me. So I have a friend, Crystal Nix. I hope she's watching. She went to, it's a United Church of Christ, I think in Compton, California. And they had a prayer vigil for me. It was a Thursday night around nine o'clock. And right around 9.30 that Thursday night, I started feeling better. Friday morning when the nurse came in to take my temperature and to check on me, I said, can I have a hot dog? And she said, what? What, what did you just say? I said, can I get a hot dog? And she says, girl, let me take your, let me take your blood. <laughs> let, me, let me check your temperature. She says, oh my God, your temperature is gone. And whatever you had, it's gone. I said, I'm, I'm cured. She goes, I said, well, what did you guys do? We didn't do anything, but you just asked for a hot dog and you had no appetite, right? <laughs> so I drove a city, I, it was Long Beach. I think the Lo VA center was in Long Beach, the VA hospital. So I took a, a bus from Long Beach to, to Compton and another bus to transfer to her house. And I was sitting on Crystal's step. And she said, hey, Teresa. I said, you said hey to me like you knew I was going to be here. She says, I did. I said, how did you know? She said, because we prayed for you last night. I said, what time? She said, nine o'clock. I said, oh, my God. At 930, I felt better. And she said, Teresa, I had a dream that you were sitting in church on the third pew this Sunday. And guess where I was sitting? On the third pew in church that Sunday. That wasn't wow. nothing but a miracle from God. So this book is all about miracles. She prayed the power of prayer. This book could have been called the power of prayer because it was through their prayers that healed me. And the second thing I talked about was my mother's ill. My mother was so sick. She had renal failure. She had high blood pressure. She had diabetes. I mean, she was just really getting ready to check out. But my aunt Nancy called a prayer group in Florida. It was a phone prayer group. 
And the next morning, my mother got up, washed her car, washed her curtains. We do that in North Carolina. We wash the curtains, stick them down. Yeah. Yeah. Her, you know, and I called my mother. I said, Mom, what you doing? She goes, I'm washing the curtain. I said, what? I washed the car. I said, what? I had to drive from Maryland to check on my mom. And it looked like nothing was wrong with her. Yes, she still had diabetes. Yes, she still had renal failure. Yes, she still had high cholesterol. But you could not tell by looking at her. She felt good enough for us to drive to South Carolina to go to a graduation. That was right. another miracle. God gave her some more time. And she lived another three years after that. So this book is all about miracles. It's all about miracles. What's God got to do with it? Everything. Everything. Wow. Wow. Those are some amazing stories. Yes. They're just amazing. Mm -hmm. And you're right. God has everything to do with everything. Everything. Wow. So what else do you have coming up? Now, you know that I'm going to be going to London with you. I, I've invited oh, myself. Oh, yes, yes. yes I've invited yes. myself. So you're not yep. going to be in yep. the little cheering section. I'm going along with you. Thank you. So I'm so I'm so glad we're getting let together. We're going to be there at the same table having a wonderful time. Yes, my yes. book launch. My book launch is September the 20th for Passion, Purpose, Peace. And um, my bestseller campaign is going to be September the 21st. Uh, I have a daughter turning 21, so I'm going to be celebrating her birthday in Las Vegas this year in October. Wow. And of course, in November, I am London bound with the rest of the LET gang. Wow. Wow. Some exciting times. Some exciting times. And I know that you give it all to God. Oh, yes. I know that you do. I, I, do. I have no doubts that you do because yes. it all comes from him. It yep. really does. Yes. Wow. So do you have any speaking engagements coming up? Well, I just had one yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, I will be speaking at the gala on November the 12th. So that's okay. my next actual speaking. I do speak on August the 10th at a small graduation. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. So for someone who is young like ourselves and they're in a place of stuck and they feel that they cannot do anything else because it's time for us to retire and go home and sit in the rocking chair. Talk that man or that woman out of that place of stuck. Well, here, and, and I'm so glad that you said that because I forgot I have another big project coming up. First, I'm going to say, listen to your heart. What is your truth? Yes, you're retired, but have you fulfilled your divine assignment? What is it that you really, really, really want to do? So you're retired. Okay, it's now time for you to transition. It's time for you to reset. Set a personal goal for yourself and another professional goal for yourself. And once you set those goals, then write down some strategies and activities to make sure those goals happen. And then after you do that, write down some benchmarks to monitor whether or not you have met your goals. And then after that, find some people, network with people with like minds that want to do what you, your new goals are. Find them, network with them, and then have accountability partner. Just because you're 64, 54, or 74, you're still here. There's something for you to do. You yes. can't stay stuck. There's another assignment out there for you, which reminds me, I, you said, what am I doing next? I am launching my Passion Purpose Peace Academy. Okay. That's a professional goal of mine. It's an eight-week program. And in that program, the first step is self-discovery. Who are you? The second step is knowing what you love. The third step is developing a blueprint. The fourth step is implementing, monitoring, and scoring. The fifth step is networking. And the sixth step is accountability. Okay. So I'm going to show people if you're if you're just got out of a marriage and you're divorced, if you just have an empty nest, if you're retired and don't know what you want to do, if you own a multi-million dollar company and your employees are unhappy and you don't know what to do, Passion Purpose Peace Academy is for you because I will show you how to be successful, fulfilled and have inner peace. Don't stay stuck. No, don't stay stuck. Mm -hmm. Follow that formula. Okay. You're still here. There's a purpose. Okay. Don't stay stuck. Okay. I like that. Don't stay stuck. I got to get a t-shirt that made. Don't mm -hmm. stay stuck. <laughs> Don't stay stuck. So I'm going to turn your theme song back on as we get ready to close out. Because I just think it's a wonderful song. Yes. 
I just think it was a wonderful song. And I know everything that you're doing, there's nothing but good that's going to come from it. And I am so proud to know you and so proud of you. So, Dr. Teresa Mosley, I thank you so much for what you're doing. Ambassador of Peace, because peace is everything. It is everything. We've got to have peace in our hearts, in our minds, in our homes, in our communities, in our churches, everywhere. There must be peace. Yes, ma'am. There must be peace. So I thank you so much for joining us this evening. Good luck to you. Keep up the good work. I always leave audiences with this. Life is but a short road to our ultimate destiny. Make peace, have compassion, and learn to love before you get there. Peace wow. and blessings. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. And so... Thank you for all of you in the listening audience who tuned in with us today for the Speak Easy podcast. You could have done anything else with your time this evening, but you chose to spend time with us, and I thank you. And so until next week, may God continue to bless you today, tomorrow, and forever. Good night. <laughs>